Do you remember the game Portal? You shoot an orange portal, you shoot a blue portal. You go into one and you instantly come out of the other. It's a pretty amazing concept. Except there's one thing that's always bothered me. Moving through space is only half of our reality. What if these portals could also move you in time? What if you could desynchronize your portals so that one put you a little bit into the past and one put you a little bit into the future? What would that look like? Well, I'm gonna use all of my effect skills, some unconventional film engineering, and the most precise choreography I've ever had to do to show you this idea brought to life. Imagine you are trapped in a concrete room with no doors, and no windows, but you have a portal gun. Can you escape? Ever since we made the Gravity Gun short film, I've been wanting to follow it up with a Portal Gun short film. And this is the challenge I wanted to set for myself. The game Portal puts you through an ever increasingly difficult series of escape room puzzles. But what if we jumped all the way to maximum difficulty? A concrete room with no apparent ways of coming in or out. A blank cube. In a situation like this, all you can do is teleport from your prison to your prison, no matter where you place a portal. Unless your Portal Gun malfunctions so badly that now it works in a new dimension time. Let's say that entering this portal puts you five seconds into the future. Let's say that entering this portal puts you five seconds into the past. So what would happen if you threw this ball through one of these portals? So if I throw a ball through this portal, okay, you guys were talking about this earlier and my brain shut down a little bit. So if you walk through this, come out here five seconds in the past. Wait, it would... If I threw it there, mm -hmm. so it would... But what if I did... Hmm. If I threw it this way, <laughs> it would hit me before I even threw it. Five seconds into the... <laughs> then it would, now you throw it. Then I throw it, <laughs> boom, it's already happened. Exactly. Five seconds into the past. And then if I threw that one... It would just... And then I would two, wait five seconds. Three, four, four five. five. And then I caught it this time because I, I was ready for it. That's fun. T it took me a second. I had to compute. I had to load. Well, I understand it, sort of. Not really. I don't really understand time travel stuff because none of it's real and makes any sense. Now, before we go on, there's one thing that I should mention. Nico, I'm you from the future. You need to do exactly what I say. Don't listen to him. He's not the real Nico from the future. I'm the real Nico from the future. And you need to do exactly what I say. There's two of you, huh? Tell me something only the real Nico would know. The, the sponsor of today's video is Squarespace. All right. How about you? Squarespace has an extensive library of award-winning templates that will suit all Everybody knows that. One more shot. Better make it something good, buddy. Squarespace offers a new set of blueprint tools that let you personalize your web page in a guided process using professional layouts that makes your website a bespoke creation exactly for your needs, optimized across every device. All right. Keep going. Squarespace also offers a seamless way to accept payments, whether it's credit card, Apple Pay, PayPal, or even Afterpay and ClearPay. And if you go to squarespace.com slash corridor crew, you can get 5% off your next website or domain. Whoa, actually, it's 10% off. Man, good call. I'm glad you knew I was real. Uh, why'd you shoot me? Oh, you're the evil Nico. Yeah, I'm the evil Nico. What was I talking about again? Oh, right. Basically, when you add time travel to something, it gets really weird really fast. Now when you want a character to do something, there's already an infinite amount of that character doing that thing. This also calls into question the whole idea of free will. If I walk out of that portal, it means I have to walk through this portal in the future. But what if I don't? What if I change my mind? Are my atoms gonna explode? Ah. Or should I have never come out of that portal in the first place? Because I never went into that portal in the future. And on top of that, I have to deal with overlapping timelines, meaning I have to deal with time-synchronized clones of myself interacting with myself. Doing a clone effect is actually very simple. You put the camera on a tripod so it doesn't move, film you doing something on one side of the frame, and then you film yourself on the other side of the frame, stack them together, and boom, you got a clone shot. But there's just one problem. The shot is boring. If you're doing a cool piece about time travel and portals, you gotta have cool visuals to match. The problem with this effect is that once you move the camera, the whole shot breaks. I mean, to do a clone shot with a moving camera requires moving the camera the exact same way for every single take, which no human can do. I mean, you need something like an industrial robot arm combined with like the ease of like Blender's camera animation system. I mean, if only something like that existed. Ow. Hey! 
This is the Sisu Cinema Robot lent to us by our friends at Sisu, and it fixes all of those problems that I just listed. It's easy to animate as a couple keyframes in After Effects or Blender, and it repeats the exact same motion every single time. Now I can have a dynamic moving camera while having as many clones of myself as I want. I've never been able to work with something like this before. It's super cool. This isn't even Sisu Cinema Robotics' biggest arm. They have a whole variety of them that you've seen used in food commercials and movies and a whole bunch of stuff. And they loaned it to us for the purpose of experimenting. So while this video is not sponsored, I do want to say thank you to Sisu. And if you guys have any ideas how we can use this in the future, well, leave some suggestions. We'll give it a shot. So now we have our heads wrapped around this idea of time traveling portals. I've gone and studied the ways of the robot arm and Christian and JC have built this concrete box for me to play in. Now I have to actually program the shot. The thing is, this is one long unbroken shot, but in real life we have to film it little chunks at a time. So I've shot a video board, just a locked off phone on a tripod to get the timing. We're gonna kind of estimate where the camera should be based on that video board. This is kind of the, uh, the moment all the theory is gonna come together and either it's going to work or it's going to fail spectacularly. We'll see what happens. All right, Emmett, I'm set. I'm gonna run this whole sequence I programmed in. Three, two, one, action. One, two, three, enters. The test was interesting. It's looking decent, it's pretty to look at, which is great, and the motion is consistent. But I'm going through it one more time, trying to like write the whole thing, do more interesting things, things that makes them feel like they're in the same space. The ring showing that there's no wires and the levitating person. So I'm trying to also have this glue, this like signature thing that each character is doing at the end of their entrance and exit so you can understand that the person's traveling backwards in time by five seconds. Anyways, I'm gonna finish up this video board, see how it looks, and with this video board, that should give me exact timing that I will replicate with the camera motion. I think we're ready to shoot this thing for real. Today's the day. I have made a lot of video boards. I've made three full video boards, maybe like an additional like three. I've programmed the camera motion three, maybe four times now. It's by no means perfect at this point, but it actually works for the whole thing. And I believe I'm in focus for all the shots. <laughs> so uh, we're good to go. These portals are about as good as they're gonna get. Camera's on, on Emmett. Three, two, one. Action. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Coming out of portal, looking around. Three, two, one, bump. Whew. It's a workout. And now here we are. We filmed the whole thing. Did it work? Let's go find out. There's an old saying. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong, which is why we practiced and practiced and practiced here and did test after test. But one thing still went wrong. The screw that holds the tripod plate to the camera was a little loose, so the camera would twist <laughs> on the tripod plate at the end of the thing. However, the motion all lined up perfectly, but things are a little bit misaligned. Thankfully, all I really have to do is just slide it left or right and then it works great. I still have to do a bunch of rotoscoping. That's the next step here is I need to go in and like cut myself out because there's parts where I overlap on myself. And then also the portal effects, I'll be doing that with kind of the same way I did the lightsabers and to the death where I made a point of those swords being the brightest thing on set. So rather than having to track something by hand, you just pick the brightest thing in the shot and you use that to key in your effect. So I'll just be keying in the portal effect on the portals here, doing basically a luma and color mask, expanding that with some noise, adding the glow and some fuzz and all the other things I need to make the edges of the portal feel alive. But watching this, the sync works, the positioning works, but also more importantly, my timing needed to be perfect. When I did my tests and had the camera just on a tripod, I could slip and slide things as much as I wanted to because the camera itself wasn't synced to anything. It was just my performance that could be adjusted. Here, things have to happen when they happen. So like my high five had to be down to the frame and it wasn't for most of the takes, but it was for one of the takes. So it worked. That's all, you need. <laughs> all I need. What about the clock that's supposed to be in there? All right. We wanted to have a clock in the room. So we didn't want to have to reset this clock for every single take. So I figured the whole thing's motion controlled. Let's just shoot a pass that's just the clock for the whole thing. And then for everything else that we film, I just won't have the clock there. I'll stick it in later. There's 12 shots now that I've cut together, but now I have to actually put one unbroken shot over the whole thing, which is the clock, and it needs to line up. I'm gonna do it right here in front of you. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's working. It looks like the clock was there. There are some slight like micro jitters. It's not too bad. Done it. If this didn't work, I'd have to do the whole thing over again. I do have some work ahead of me. I need to rotoscope myself here and there. I need to do the portal effect, some color keys. I need to do some sound design. But the important part is done and it's working. And now I just have to clean it all up. That's what I'm going to do for the next three days.
So I've been working a few days on putting all this footage together, comping it. We were trying to bring to life the concept of portals with time travel. I'm curious if you guys think we did it. All I know is that when Austin and I were trying to wrap our heads around this whole thing, it made me just quit and I walked away. If I see something that's coherent, uh, you already did better than we did, so I can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm hoping to see something that could maybe inspire a real video game. Temper tantrum causes time to dilate. I really like how it ran through the beats that you would think about if you were in that situation. I like how it's all played on one shot. It's cool. It's crazy how you were able to get like one camera move basically that the whole video takes place in. So that, that's really crazy. The rock, paper, scissors moment too, where he comes through and he's already got that look on his face of like, oh, I know it's going to be scissors yeah. because I lost to scissors last time. <laughs> that's such a fun character moment. Don't forget, this character is trying to escape this concrete box. So now that they've figured out time portals, how do they escape? And if you want to see how that happens, you can check out the whole short on the Corridor channel.